Hello all, I am Sai and in today's video I am bringing to you my April reading wrap up. I should say that April was a nice reading month for me. It started out great and after the first 10 days for 2 weeks it was kind of messy because I was not that much invested in reading any of the books that I read even though the books were good towards the end. And the last few days of the month it picked up again and I should say that in May my reading is going really really good. One more thing which I want to tell is that this wrap up is really really late for me. I usually try to publish my wrap ups in the first 10 days of the next month itself so that it is a bit more clear for me but because of some reasons I was not able to film my April wrap up in the first few days of May hence we are getting it this late. I managed reading a total of 12 books so let's just dive into them. Starting with the physical books, I managed reading a total of 4 physical books and all 4 of them were solid reads for me. Of these the first one is Act Hold by Tolby McSmith which is a YA contemporary book and it is dealing with a trans main character. Here we follow August Green who is a trans boy and he moves into New York City in order to get into this high school for acting. He is very passionate about acting and he wants to get into this school. His parents are transphobic so the only condition that they give him in order to move into New York City to pursue his passion is that he must not change his sex. But after moving into New York City he takes over the exchange process and he is hugely supported by his aunt who is a great character written by the author here. We basically just see August going through his high school life in his final year of school pursuing his passion and facing a lot of issues because of his gender identity. It is a really really nice book and I should say that the author has expressed each and everything that he wants to express in the most clear way possible without making it messy at all. It does deal with a lot of serious issues but the way in which the author presents them to us is very very proper in its tone without trying to be forceful in any way. Having said all these things I want to mention that while reading the last third of this book it was a bit difficult for me because it was emotionally taxing seeing all the things that the main character was going through. So please do keep that in mind alone if you are going to read this book and including that I should say that this was a really really nice read for me. It was a solid book and I rated it 4 stars. The author also has another book called Stay Gold which is out already. I don't have the physical copy of it but it is available on story tell so I think I might listen to that also. Let's just wait and see how it's going to go. The next one is A Song of Raids and Ruins by Roseanne A. Brown which is the first book inside a YA fantasy duology and I should say that this series itself as a whole was a bit surprising for me because in the beginning I was not that much interested in reading the series because it is kind of a series in which both our main characters try to kill each other without the other knowing. It is a very basic YA plot but the way in which the author has dealt with this is kind of different and at the same time the backdrop against which the series is set is also fresh for me compared to the other fantasy series that I have read so far. Here we follow our two main characters Karina and Malik of whom Karina is the crown princess for this huge kingdom and in the beginning of the first book her mother dies because of which she is going to inherit the throne and Malik is this boy from a very low class inside the society where classism exists hugely and because of this he has been deprived of a lot of privileges that even normal people get in this world. Because of some things that happen in the first few chapters of the book both the princess as well as Malik have to kill each other without the other knowing in order to get what they want inside the series. Both of these characters have been written well by the author for me and I should say that for the first book this was very engaging because it was action packed throughout. From the beginning of the book until the end I was not like bored at any instant I just wanted to keep on flipping the pages because there was something adventurous going on throughout the book. It was a decent first book to a duology and I rated it 4 stars. I'll talk more about the series when I talk about the second book. The next one is a short story collection which is also part of yet another very popular series and it is The Return of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle which is the third collection of short stories inside the entire Sherlock Holmes series and I've been reading the series ever since the mid of 2021 and I should say that I'm taking my sweet time with it and I'm also enjoying the series very much because I know that if I read the series fast I'll not be able to enjoy the intricacies and the brilliance of the series in any way. At the same time the character development of both Sherlock Holmes as well as John Watson inside this one is really really nice okay. My most favorite part about the series compared to anything else is the friendship that is maintained by the author between both of these main characters. It is very very realistic and I don't think I have read this kind of friendship in any of the other books or series that I have read so far. This is a collection of 13 short stories and I listened to the audiobook that is narrated by Stephen Fry and followed on with the physical copy. I have told this many times before while I have read the previous books inside the series also. I would highly suggest you to buy that audiobook collection which is around 73 to 75 hours long but it is completely worth it to spend a credit on Audible. I have been listening to the entire collection only through his narration and it is really really nice. This was a solid collection of short stories and just as the title suggests this talks about the return of Sherlock Holmes three years after the end of the past story inside the entire series. I enjoyed their banter, I enjoyed all the adventures and the mysteries that the author has written and it was a fun ride for me so I rated it 4 stars. The last physical book is 
a psalm of storms and silence by Roseanne A. Brown again. This is the second book inside the duology and I should say that I enjoyed this one a lot more compared to the first book because there are so many more things happening in the second book compared to the first book. And one more thing which I want to say is that the first book ended a bit further inside the story. So I got certain doubts of how the author was going to continue on with the second book. I read both of these back to back. But I was able to finish this a bit farther only because it took a bit of time for me to read because it is huge in size. In both of these books, one thing which I enjoyed a lot about the author's writing is that she gives mental health issues and mental illnesses for both the main characters inside the series. Karina, who is the female main character, is suffering from PTSD continuously and because of this she also has some very severe migraines. The male character Malik has extreme anxiety and the way in which it manifests in him is also very very difficult to read at times. If you are a person who has anxiety, please do keep that in mind while you are going to read the series because all of them are very very realistic okay while i was reading some of the scenes with malik i was able to feel what he was feeling because i'm also an anxious person having said all that even though both of those issues were properly addressed by the author here the way in which the characters were shown to deal with them did not seem that healthy to me the author has said in a note in the beginning of both of the books that she has dealt with all of these issues in the best way that she could and she is equipped with so i think i can waver that a little bit as a whole this was a nice adventurous series and i think i will reread it sometime in the future also because i like the setup in which the series was taking place and that is made a lot of things seem a bit more fresh for me and I rated the second book 4.25 stars. Moving on to the audiobooks, I managed reading a total of 6 audiobooks in April and of these 6, 3 belong to a single series. So I am going to talk about the series first and it is the Tiger at Night trilogy by Swati Teerdala which is a YA fantasy series that is set up against an Indian backdrop and this series was something which I loved from the first book to the last okay. Especially the Indian setup and the way in which the author has written our culture intertwined with fantasy in this one was awesome. I think by far this is the best Indian influenced fantasy series that I have read. I have not read that many but of all the things that I've read, I think this is the best because I don't think anyone who's not of an Indian ethnicity can write this series with such authenticity and fluidity personally because it was just so original for me. In the beginning, after reading about the author, I thought that okay, she is Indian American, so it might not feel completely Indian for me. But trust me, if I had not read anything about the author, if I had not read her name, I think I would have easily believed that this is a series that is written by an Indian author who lives in India because it was very, very fluid. And since I listened to the audiobooks, the narrator in the series was also really really good okay the narrator's name is Sneha Matan and she has a beautiful accent and that was also something which I was worried about since I listened to the audiobooks that the narrator might have an American or English accent which will easily change the names of the places and the characters inside the book but it was not like that the narrator had a beautiful Indian accent and it was just so perfect here we follow our two main characters Isha and Kunal of whom Isha is this member of this rebel group who's trying to bring down an empire because of some bad things that have happened to them because of the emperor and Kunal is a very stringent soldier who's working inside the army because he's been trained by his uncle to do so. Both of them cross paths and because of this a romance blooms between them. They try to understand the other side's story and what they are standing for at the same time trying to help this person whom they love so much also. I loved both of the main characters in this one. I liked the politics very much. The magic was a bit soft and fluid and I think I could have liked it better if the magic was a bit more hard and intricate. But having said all those things, the Indian layers of the story was the thing which made me love the series so much. I'm sure that I'm going to recommend this multiple times in the future. But I should say that I'm super glad that I've read the series and I want to read more by this author also in the future. I rated the first book, The Tiger at Midnight, 4.5 stars. The second book, The Archer at Dusk and the third book, The Chariot at Dawn, both 4 stars each. It was an amazing series and if you've not read it, please do go for it and try it. It's completely worth it. The next one is Nala's Damayanti by Anand Neelakantan which is just the love story between Nalan and Damayanti that is a great love story from Hindu mythology. I have known this story ever since my childhood and the way in which Anand Neelakantan has made it his own with this writing style and with his vocabulary is just so beautiful. Okay, I read only one other book by Anand Neelakantan before this one which is Valmiki's Women that I read last year and I fell in love with that book itself because of his writing especially. And the same thing happened here also. This was not as good as Valmiki's Women for me because it is a story which I already knew. I listened to the audiobook and I think the audiobook in Storytel and the physical copy that was released in early April are different from each other because I don't don't see both of them listed together anywhere. So for anyone who's not familiar with Nalan and Damayanti's love story, Nala is considered to be the greatest cook of the world and Damayanti is this lovely, kind and beautiful princess of this huge kingdom. And the love that blooms between them because of a swan that communicates their messages to the others, the entire plot of the story. This audiobook started out very cute and then it became beautiful which turned into a lot of pain and towards the end ended in satisfaction. So as a whole it was a good experience for me but I think I could have enjoyed it more if I had read it physically so I rated it 4 stars. 
the next one is a non fiction book and it is what i talk about when i talk about running by haruki murakami this is the only non fiction that i've read by this author and also one of the very few books that i've read by him so far and i should say that this was a very interesting book for me it is basically just like an essay written by the author talking about why he likes running how he started running and what are all the benefits that he has reaped from running and also the kinds of friendships that he has acquired because of the practice of running that he has been doing for the past few decades this resonated with me at points because last year in march i tried to start running and i ran for like 2 weeks but because of some problems in my leg i was not able to continuously run and it caused some problems for me then i just put a pause on it and after that i did not run at all I don't think I'll be doing running also in the future because you know I did it to feel fresh and it just made me tired and painful a lot which just made me realize some of the things that the author talked about and my memory just went back one year and told me all those things that you experienced some of these things so it is a bit relatable for you apart from that I should say that this was a nice philosophical book for me the author himself talks about how running is not just a physical activity for him but also kind of a meditative practice he also talks about how we got into this career of writing and what he did before that one he talks a little bit about his marriage and his friendship with some of the people from the earlier stages of his life if you are a fan of murakami i think you will enjoy this a bit more because this has a lot more personal things related to his life compared to just running i liked it and i was very glad that i read it so i read that this one also forced us the last audio book is you are the mountain which is a self help book i have been meaning to read this book for a few months because i heard some booktubers talking about it and praising it a lot i think it was launched in early 2020 because of which i was not able to hear more about this book and it has taken this much time for me to just to know about it and go forward and listen to it it's a very tiny audio book i don't think it was even 5 hours long and i should say that it was a really helpful audio book okay very few times after listening to an audio book especially in non fiction i think that i want to buy the book and have a physical copy of it and reread it again this is one such book for me it basically talks about self sabotage and how you can get out of it in a very conscious and aware way and make yourself even more equipped in order to do all the things that you want to do in life it is also not written in a condescending way that it makes you feel bad about yourself it is written in a very positive note while maintaining the real aspects of life so i think because of all these things it was an entire package for me and i rated it 4.5 stars lastly talking about the ebooks i read two ebooks from the same series but the series collection of companion novels so you can read any of the books inside the series in any order and i'm talking about the married to magic series by elise kova i read the first book a deal with the elf king last year so i read the second book which is a dance with the fey prince first this year and i should say that it was a pretty nice book i'll not say that it was great in any way okay it is just same when it comes to the plot as the first book here we follow our main character who is living along with her father stepmother and her step sisters in a house and because of some things that happen she is married to this man married because she is literally sold to that person but after she gets married she lives a much more comfortable and happy life than she lived with her stepmother and her father only after a few days from her marriage she realizes that she is married to a fae and not a human being and because of which she tries to escape and some things happen in her life and since she is a human being who's gotten into the fae world right now there are some complications that happen inside the fae world also which the fae prince and her have to deal with together i should say that it was quite a boring book for me but it was not so boring that i want to dnf it the first book was much better compared to this one so i rated this one just 3 stars I would not even recommend most people to read it if they have read the first book because it was not that great. I'd say that if you want to enjoy the series more start with this book. Read the third book and then go to the first book because of the three that I've read so far the first one was the best. I don't think I'll recommend it that much. And the last book is the third book inside the same series which is A Duel with the Vampire Lord again by Elise Kova and this one was much better compared to the second book. It was not as good as the first book for me but even having said all that this was a really really good installment inside the series because it just felt a lot huger in scope compared to the first two books okay the first two book just felt like there were a lot more contained compared to the third book but only in the third book i was able to see this whole world expanding since all these books are part of the same series and happen inside the same world they are all connected with the others in some way but you need not read the other books in order to understand and enjoy each and every one of the three books i liked this one a lot more compared to the second book because it was much huger in scope the author did a lot more groundwork for this book compared to the second book the romance in this one was also really nice compared to the second book but it was not as good as the first book again and as a whole it was a fun and much darker read compared to the first two books inside the series so i rated it 4.25 stars so yes guys those are all the 12 books which i read in april and don't forget to leave your april wrap up in the comments below because i want to know what you have read and if you read any of the books that i have talked about in this video do leave your opinions on them in the comments so that we can have a discussion and if you did enjoy watching today's video and found it useful or helpful in some way or the other don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also share it to your friends and if you want to get more content from me do subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day